Hello, this is Ken from the Computer Clan, here today with another edition of our very popular Bit Series. We get questions a lot, and I mean a lot, about what all the fuss is with 64-bit smartphones and tablets. This stuff is starting to come into the market, especially with things like the iPad Air and the iPhone 5S. We're going to be seeing this a lot more. Some people say it's just a marketing gimmick, while others know the real truth behind why this is good. So let's take a look at some basics first. You may already be aware of what the difference is between 32-bit and 64-bit operating systems. Just in case you're not, a 32-bit system allows up to 4 gigabytes of RAM to be addressed. RAM is basically the temporary memory inside of your computer that helps load data faster than off a hard drive. You store all of your files on a hard drive, and that's your permanent storage. But the computer also has its own little temporary storage that it puts important data that it can access really quickly. That is what random access memory is for. And a 32-bit operating system can support up to 4 gigabytes. Just to warn you, there are some exceptions. Some systems can use something called a PAE, a physical address extension, and that system can then use more than 4 gigabytes of RAM on a 32-bit system, but this is not common among consumers, especially in smartphones, so we won't get into all of that. We have some other videos that talk about some more advanced aspects such as that. But in a nutshell, to keep it simple, without any other modifications, a 32-bit system can support up to 4 gigabytes of RAM. A 64-bit system, on the other hand, can support up to 16 exabytes of RAM. That is 16 billion gigabytes. That's a theoretical limit. I am pretty sure we have not hit that high amount of RAM even on supercomputers, but it's virtually unlimited in practice. 64-bit can support a lot of RAM. And it can support more registers than a 32-bit system. Registers are tiny units of storage on the processor. Those help with performance. So a 32-bit system can support them, of course, but a 64-bit system can support way more. The actual number of registers varies on what architecture you are talking about. It's different between different companies, like Intel's may be a little bit different compared to Qualcomm's, etc. Now, the iPhone 5S was the first 64-bit smartphone to hit the market. It uses an A7 processor designed by Apple, and it is based on the ARM V8 architecture, which is 64-bit. This is where the confusion comes in for a lot of people, and this is why some people also think it's a marketing gimmick. If the main advantage of a 64-bit OS is to address more than 4 gigabytes of RAM, then what's the point of an iPhone having a 64-bit processor if it only has 1 gigabyte of RAM? Well, that is an excellent question. But it's not just Apple that's looking into this. It's Qualcomm, NVIDIA, Intel, and probably a bunch of other companies. So it's not just Apple looking into this. That must mean, hey, there's something about this 64-bit mobile computing that is important. So, why? Why, why, why? A lot of computers today, laptops, desktops... Those easily have more than 4 gigabytes of RAM. But smartphones and tablets? Not so much. But there are two big reasons why it's important that Apple, Samsung, Qualcomm, and all these other companies are moving to 64-bit mobile computing. And I'll show you. The first big reason is future-proofing. It's only a matter of time before smartphones and tablets can actually hold 4 plus gigabytes of RAM. And remember that other thing I talked about, registers? Those are useful today. Those will help with better performance. We'll get into that in a little bit. So here's an example on how technology changes. In 2007, the original iPhone had 128 megabytes of RAM. In 2013, it now has one gigabyte of RAM. In six years, the amount of RAM has increased by eight times. So it's only a matter of time before it gets to 4 gigabytes. And a larger device like the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, that has 3 gigabytes of RAM already. That's even closer to being at the end of the 32-bit barrier. So future-proofing is one of the main points. But I also talked about performance with registers. 
For this example, I will talk about ARM V8. More registers are present in the ARM V8 64-bit architecture, as opposed to the 32-bit architecture. More registers means faster number crunching. The system is more efficient with math. And faster number crunching means better performance for a lot of very useful things like video encoding. Video encoding can run significantly faster on a 64-bit system because it is able to use more registers. Even if we don't even think about having more than 4 gigabytes of RAM, you will still see a performance boost with certain operations, especially ones that are intense with number crunching. We live in a post-PC era. A lot of tablets and smartphones are out there now, and they are selling faster than computers. So since we're in this post-PC era, it's only a matter of time before the hardware gets a lot more sophisticated and we need to be ready. So since we're getting close to that time, in a couple years, we'll be seeing a lot more mobile devices with 4 gigabytes of RAM or more. Well, we might as well start now by getting ready for the 64-bit era in mobile computing. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, let us know in the comments section. We hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to stay in touch with more Real Deal videos and click that like button if you liked the video. In addition, check out our largest production to date. It is now available, you do not want to miss this. And if you want to see more content from us, or apply for a YouTube partnership, visit us on our other great websites.